Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part two of the Q&As. And you know what, this first question here, this is obviously someone uh, trying to troll, think they're gonna troll me. And they're gonna basically have, just call me fat. And they're using a fake profile with no real pictures or anything. And that's okay because it's actually a good question. So let's go ahead and address it. So let's go ahead and do this for the first question in part two of the Q&A. Jason, watching the recent barbell medicine video with Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum on waist circumference has me wondering what yours is. You often speak these days of being more conscientious of your overall health and wanting to improve it, especially given your family history of heart disease. But surely your waist is well over 40 inches. Any plans to fix that soon? Not hating, just genuinely curious. I know you don't care about aesthetics and that's not the angle from which I am posing this question. I'm strictly talking about health and how having a waist of 40 inches or higher on a male can greatly increase risk of developing the typical lifestyle diseases, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, etc. Why risk your overall health for an extra 5 to 10% of your list when you're already reasonably strong? Okay, the reason this is obviously a troll is because I don't have over a 40 inch waist. I wear 36 inch waist jeans and shorts. <laughs> like my cargo shorts are 36 inches. If I want to carry extra heat in them, uh, depending on which holster I'm wearing, I might go to 38 so that I can uh, fit a full-size handgun inside there. But it, again, it depends on what holster I'm wearing and, and where I'm going and whatever. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely ridiculous. Because if, if a 38, I can fit a uh, clock 10 millimeter with a full-size frame in there. Uh, yeah, that would be less than 40 inches still. So that being said, uh, kind of a silly, silly point because it's pretty obvious that's not where I'm at with my measurements. And we've already seen my body fat percentage. We know where it is. Uh, actually, though I am cutting, I am losing weight. I am uh, setting body fat goals. I'm just doing a slow cut. It's going to take time. But we set goals for the year, goals for different DEXA scans. Uh, so obviously I am working towards that um, because I, I do agree. Um, but I'm well, I'm under a 40 inch waist, but I would agree anyone who's got a 40 plus inch waist as a male needs to obviously, obviously reduce body weight and body fat. And I think we all agree on that. That's basic common sense for health. And uh, if that's a point he wants to make, then I agree a person probably shouldn't do that unless their life goals require it. Maybe they want to be the world's strongest man. Maybe they want to be a sumo wrestler, in which case they're going to trade off lifespan and health for their sport. Uh, but obviously I'm not doing either of those. And yeah, long term, I plan on being 15% or lower body fat. And that would probably put me at somewhere in the range of a 34 inch waist at that point. Uh, so yeah, I would agree. And if I was in that situation, I would be making much more drastic weight cuts than I'm making. Uh, but I'm not. All right, next question. Jason, in your basic strength program for non-strength athletes, you don't include any direct back work, only deadlifts and eccentric chin-ups. Would you recommend including rows or lat pull-downs? If so, how many sets and reps? Uh, I don't have any direct back work except the two direct back work exercises you just listed. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> uh, honestly, I think most guys could build a pretty big back without doing any, even the chin-ups. Uh, to be honest, squat bench deadlift in the press uh, I think most guys could build a decent back if they got strong at all of those. And then, you know, anything beyond that's icing on the cake or you're trying to get a really big back. Really big back. But remember, it has eccentric chin-ups in there because a lot of people who are, again, only lifting twice, we get a two-day-a-week lifting program where I want people out of the gym inside of an hour twice a week. That is the, the easiest, simplest program I have. And I'm assuming you're not even strong enough to do a chin-up. That's why it's eccentric chin-ups. If you're strong enough to do chin-ups, you go to chin-ups and then weighted chin-ups, right? But uh, chin-ups and deadlifts uh, done twice a week are enough for most guys. I would say the average guy who's not trying to be really big more than adequate to build their back up, more than adequate. So no, I don't think they need that. Now I think lat pull downs and stuff might have their place for certain people, but I think the majority of people don't need lat pull downs either ever. Uh, I'm not saying there are not a place for them in certain types of uh, back specialization. They can have their place and I won't call it a useless exercise, but I think for most people, they're kind of a waste of time. Uh, and definitely for people on a program like this, they're a waste of time. All right, uh, next question. What's your current stance on bulking and cutting? I'm on the higher end of a healthy body fat. Would a better option be recomping? Uh, it depends on what we define as that. Um, if you're a male, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This is one reason I'm cutting right now. If you're over 20% body fat, you need to cut, right? If your goal is health. Now, if your goal is to be in the NFL, 
as a lineman or your goal is to be a sumo wrestler or your goal is to compete at very high levels in strongman and open-ended weight classes or powerlifting and open-ended weight classes, by all means, ignore this advice. But if you want to be healthy and fit, if you are over 20% body fat, if you care about your health, you need to go ahead and lose some weight, right? Uh, I think we can all agree there. Uh, every health expert in the world is going to agree there. It would be a real good idea. If you're on the higher end of the healthy body fat, consider recomping or even doing a very slow cut, which could still lead to some recomposition if your diet and training are perfect. Uh, it can totally be done. You could do both. Uh, you could lose weight while gaining a small amount of muscle mass. Again, as long as you're willing to go slow. But if you're at the higher end of the healthy range, you definitely don't need to fast cut. All right, that's, again, also not something I recommend. Just like I'm telling you, you should be under 20% body fat for health. If you're under 20% body fat and you're trying to cut weight quickly, that's also not healthy. It's not good, and it's not good for your strength or your muscle mass unless you're blasting a lot of drugs to hold on to the muscle. So these guys who are 18% body fat who are like, I'm going to lose two pounds of fat a week. I'm like, well, you're going to lose a lot of muscle unless you're on that there trend. I mean, that'll make it doable. But for everybody else, uh, you need to take it slow at that point right because again remember guys this is not a channel for competitive bodybuilders and physique competitors so we don't care what they do we're talking about people who want to be healthy fit athletic right so just i mean even what i'm doing right now i'm slow cutting i'm not in a hurry as long as the scale is going down and the body fat's going down and my strength is going up i'm happy because that's a positive trend you know, look at it from that direction but yeah if you're over 20 percent, you need to go ahead and cut all right next question What's your take on one top set followed by backup sets? Well, I think that's what you mean what I do. That's what I do right now, right? I hit a training max, a single, and then I do back off work with triples. Usually there's some sort of pause variation or something. Yeah, I, I believe in that. That's what I do currently. That's where I get my volume. Now, do you mean back off sets as in dramatically different rep ranges? Uh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And that's not a good idea from a programming perspective. In other words, I don't think you should be mixing the one to three rep range with the eight to 10 rep range in the same workout unless they're very, very different muscle groups. For example, uh, I squat bench deadlift most days. My biceps don't get a lot of work, so I train my biceps in the five to eight rep range afterwards because they're not directly involved in my big lifts, right? So that's a little bit different. Now, my face pulls are different too, even though it involves the traps and other stuff because my rear delts aren't getting a whole lot of work. So I tend to do those very high rep, up around 15 reps. But these are smaller muscles. I would not recommend for bigger muscles or for muscles that are going to be used as primary movers, you do a whole lot of mixed rep range. I don't recommend that sort of back off work. I think it's counterproductive to your training programming. Uh, if you really want to do high and low reps at the same time in the same uh, training protocol, you either need to do some sort of concurrent periodization or maybe a linear periodization system, right? But if you want to do them in the same week, they need to be on different days. That's why concurrent periodization exists. That's why it works. That's why it's effective uh, because it separates them into different days. And there's a whole long explanation for why that is, why it works better, uh, more than I can cover in a smaller Q&A video, but I've discussed that in the past quite a bit. All right, uh, next question and last question of the week. Okay, non-troll question this time. Is it possible to bulk up to a super huge weight, get liposuction or cool sculpting to remove excess fat, bulk up again and continue to end the cycle of gaining more new muscle while removing fat? Um, still kind of a troll question from you, brother, but this guy is kind of funny. He's a troll. He's funny like that. So as far as answering that goes, uh, no, it won't work. And it's not because the concept isn't sound. I mean, if you could, in a non-invasive way, remove body fat without cutting obviously if you bulked all the time uh, people would exceed their natural limits in other words if a person could eat a thousand calorie surplus every single day every single day and have body fat magically disappear at the end of each month they would get steroid like gains they would get just as good of muscle growth as people using moderate amounts of anabolics and they would get that year round however uh, there, that's not non-invasive. Cool sculpting, from my observation of it, of people I know who've had it done, only removes very, very small amounts of body fat. It's like a finishing touch thing. It's not as effective as liposuction. So you're not going to remove 10 pounds of body fat by cool sculpting. So you can bulk 10 pounds of body fat on real easy. 
Liposuction, you could take 10 pounds off, but it's extremely invasive. It will interfere with your training. Uh, it has to be all spot specific. So if, if you were getting 10 pounds of liposuction done every month, there's no way you could train hard enough to keep gaining muscle. Uh, particularly around the waistline and stuff because you have to wear the belt. It's hard to train for a little while afterwards. You have to take downtime from your hard training and everything. So that wouldn't actually work. Uh, so the current technology that we have available doesn't allow for this to work. But if we develop technology that would remove even five pounds of body fat every month in a non-invasive way that doesn't interfere with training, recovery, anything like that, yeah, it would work just as well as, as moderate amounts of performance enhancing drugs in terms of your muscle growth. It would actually work because you could just perma bulk all the time. Uh, but again, right now, the technology doesn't exist for you to do that. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.